So, if you're clicking on this video, you are asking, why did I leave? Why am I now basically a free agent, and what is the reasoning behind it, right? So, the way I'm going to put it, nothing that I'm going to say is meant to be of any malicious intent, me talking bad on anybody. It's just something that I feel for the, that organization needs to improve on to be allow it to grow where it needs to be. Uh, I, for most of you that know, I was part of it and the head of the board for almost two years. And honestly, besides a few key people, there was really not any progress. And I feel like a lot of it had to do with it being more of a personal agenda than it was a org agenda. Um, there was pr quite a bit of instances where you, know, you don't necessarily have to prove yourself, but your actions speak louder than words. So that's what I always have been told. That's what I always go by. And when it came to the CDL stuff, we weren't big enough to be able to just take money from people. Well, not taking money from people. It was a 60-40 contract, but the only thing that we were really going into was the $250 tournaments. And now I'm going straight into the CDL stuff because that's what I did majority of the last year, six months to a year. So that's what's the freshest off my mind. Um, the reason why that was very unappealing to people is because it's not like we were bringing in bank where we were able to give revenue to people. Like, yes, you know, people should go out of their way to prove themselves and show that they're able to win tournaments and win their gunfights, etc., etc. But when it comes from the starting point of any CDL, you need it's more word of mouth than it is just you trying to like say, oh, here's a contract already. It took over seven years for FaZe and you know Optic to even have player contracts, let alone like them being content creators. The biggest issue that I had when it came to Graveyard um, is the fact that pretty much no matter what you did and what you tried to push across, there's always something personal involved. Not thinking of others, more thinking of oneself. And I'm not trying to say that people are selfish and whatnot, just when you're trying to balance between relationships, fr friendships, and, you know, the business side of things. It can't all just be about these four people trying to make money. And yes, it was frustrating for a while because, you know, it seemed like people weren't motivated. People weren't putting in the time. And I think a lot of that had to do with how strict everything was. Like, people don't understand. Like, there's a time and a place for everything. And when you're at the early stages and you're constantly having to regrow everything, like, you have to build the community first to then worry about everything else. And that comes to the community aspect of it. When you are limited and you're basically stuck with the same people over and over again, it doesn't allow you to be able to network and try to attract more people. So yes, you could say like, oh, you could do TikTok to do that. You could do, you know, you go through Twitter, you could contact other CEOs, but really that doesn't get you far if you're not able to be with the people that is that brand, um, let alone trying to find possible people to join the said brand. And I think a lot of it, my, my biggest thing for me leaving, which was my own decision, it wasn't anybody else's decision, is I felt locked in a box. You know, one of the things that was told to me is like, oh, you seem different the last couple of days. You seem, you are acting like yourself. No, I wasn't acting differently. It's just I went from being very vocal and stating my opinion, saying things that are right, what is wrong, to learning to not say much because when you do it turned into a whole kebabble of like oh you know you're just spending time with these people and you're not spending time with me and i think that's something that 
Greybeard as a whole needs to recognize whether it's from the top or all the way to the bottom. You can't limit people into a certain area. And the other major reason that I felt like I need to leave, I just want to state no money was taken from people. There was all, there was a point in time where there was such thing as like leader fees and whatnot. It was mandatory. And that was supposed to all go towards ads, being able to buy equipment for people and being able to get people in tournaments that you have to pay for. But when a lot of that money that's collected is spent for personal items, such as like bills, getting people equipment, you're unable to put money towards marketing to spread the influence of what that brand was. And it's like, it's like, oh yeah, you're helping, you're helping them out. They're part of our clan. We should be able to use some of that money to help them. But at the end of the day, people need to be able to pay for their own shit. And that money should have never been used for personal expenses. And on top of that, there wasn't really any evidence to suggest that the money that was left over when we stopped doing that was going towards ads, going towards networking. There, I followed every one of those pages. There was no ads being posted. So it begs the question, where was the money going? And even standing by certain people for a long period of time and you feel like you trust them, um, it just begs the question. I, I can give a prime example right now. The individual that might come to mind when it comes to the whole thing, like I had 29K watch time point channel points on their channel and I'm able to look through because you know it's all about supporting the people that are under you I'm I was a second hand man when it came to operations and everything part of that uh, organization and when the person that is supposed to be right beside you talks about supporting others and you know sending out TikToks writing comments only 2,000 channel points compared to my 29k or almost knowing certain people for over two years so even though there was some things that were done after the fact like threatened phone calls to come to people's houses and you know we're gonna you know stab you i i don't feel the same way i'm not going to sit here and threaten people's lives or anything like that i'm not going to uh talk behind the scenes which i have talked behind the scenes before I'm not going to be immediately influenced by the frustration of feelings. I'm going to look at it at a logical and understanding way. I have no malicious intent. I have no form of like defaming what is going on there. I just feel for people that are going to join said organization... Don't become close to the people that are especially part of the staff. You can have moments with them, have a laugh here and there, but the moment that you are completely involved with uh, that org seems like when things become personal. So if you want a starting point to make a career for yourself, you know, whether it's CDL or getting tips and tricks for like streaming and everything, there's capable people there and they're very caring people. I'm just not going to be part of something anymore that cages me in and influences in a way influences me in a way that I'm not able to be myself. Once that group is able to make things more comfortable and more understanding when it comes to individuals, because at the end of the day, it's just you be being known by a brand right now so eventually they'll be able to start paying people i don't doubt that they could do it because there's always a there's always a will and there's always a way i'm not saying that they can't do what they know that they're able to do just with gaming and organizations are especially when they're together is a social aspect and when you take the sociability out of it it makes things stagnate 
So I know that they're able to do it. I just can't be a part of the personal stuff anymore. And I don't think I will go back for those reasons. There was too many times and too much money invested that went to waste. I will always cherish the memories and stuff of the people that were involved in there. And I learned a lot because of it. Not only about people, I learned how to recruit people if I decide to go down that road again. I know how to do, I did CDL practices for over six months, so I know a little bit of the competitive side of things. I'm not taking any of that for granted. I appreciate the experience that I had, and I hope that everybody that's still involved with Graveyard Mafia Elites, you know, I hope you guys do well. I know you guys can do well, and I still care for all of you. I just needed to step away from it. So, for the people that are wondering what this video is about, that's the majority of it. Uh, I may have not covered everything. If you want more specifics, um, I go live every single day. So. I don't hide anything. I don't keep things behind closed doors. I've always been honest. And I've never been known as a liar. So. And I will live by that until the day I die. Keeping things from people just causes more harm than good. So. And that's just for me. I'm not saying that anybody over there does that. But. Thank you everybody for watching this video. I know it was a little bit on the long side. And a little bit of explaining. But. I hope that helps answer some questions why I left uh, uh, the organization I was part of. And if you have more questions, I'm more than willing to answer in the comments. And if it turns out to become heated by certain individuals in the comments, they are more than willing to voice their own statements and whatnot. I'm not going to limit them. Um, but I'm also not going to fight that anymore. I was basically an object for a minute there. And I was easily replaced. And I won't make that mistake again. So, I hope you all have a wonderful day. I hope to see you all in the next one. Bye-bye!